Do you work hard? Of course. Okay. You feel like you're the hardest worker in the market? I do. Bingo. Other people. Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. Here's the thing, agents say, oh, you know, clients that want to see property at six and seven and eight o'clock at night and, you know, writing offers really late and stuff. And really, I look at it and I say, how often does that really happen? You know, and I know that some markets in certain situations, it could happen a lot. Like you might have, you might be in the demographic where there's a lot of buyers who, you know, look after work, you know, stuff like that. I get it that there are certain scenarios, but generally speaking, this is not something that happens a whole lot. And when it does, for me, like if it's 11 o'clock at night, like you just said, I'm not even gonna see that. <laughs> like I'm not even gonna see that one. I, I don't really answer my phone or email or anything after five or six o'clock unless it's one of those things where somebody wants to write an offer. If somebody wants to write an offer and it's a serious situation, I'm gonna do that. I mean, I'm gonna do that, but I'm not gonna answer like, you know, inspection, repair, addendum. Do you work hard? Of course. Okay. You feel like you're the hardest worker in the market? I do. Bingo. Other people. Bingo. <laughs> Bingo. All right. You're the hardest working agent in the market. Listen, listen to me, man. Everybody loves a hard worker. Okay. Right. And not only, and let me take it a step further. Not only does everyone love a hard worker, which what, that's what makes you different. Oh, Ricky, everybody can work hard. Yeah. No, everybody can say that they work hard. Very few people actually work hard. What I'm saying is, is working hard when nobody's looking, like I've been doing for the last 20 years. Nobody has to tell me to, 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 to grind it out 10 years ago when there was no Red X, there was no dialer, you know, looking up addresses, copying and pasting in Spokio and whitepages.com to find 100 numbers. Took me eight hours, <laughs> like to find 100 numbers and another eight hours to call them with my hand, right? Nobody had to tell me to do that. Nobody was watching me over my shoulder. Everybody knew I was doing that kind of stuff. Why? Because when I called them, they knew I had to look up their number on whitepages.com to find them, right? And, and now they're like, wow, this guy's out here really getting after it. People look at you a lot differently, man, when people know that you're working hard behind the scenes and that's what's gonna separate you. So taking it a step further, when you, when you do become and merge as this person that people recognize as a hard worker, all right, now then if you can stack your intentions, if you can stack your intentions on top of being not only a hard worker, but also caring about exactly what they have going on and being empathetic towards their situation, right? Empathy, right? Empathy, the, your biggest tool is to listen, right? To listen to what they have going on, right? That's the biggest toolbox. It's literally putting yourself in their shoes, right? Of why they're buying or selling a piece of property. You understand what I'm saying? Like, let's let's go deeper with this. Here's the thing, okay? I just I'm, I just put a property under contract for like five fifteen, okay? This this property is worth like four fifty eight months ago, okay? And now we're at five fifteen. Another one just went on the market for like five sixty and went under contract in a matter of minutes, okay? This is a two bedroom on the beach here in in, in Gulf Shores, Alabama, Orange Beach, Alabama, okay? Like. Okay, this time last year, as prices really started surging, you know, after we came back from the shutdown and everything was going crazy, you know, I'm sitting here saying, okay, the market is solid. Like the fundamentals of the real estate industry are solid. Why? Because most buyers, right, like probably in the 90% range or more, are end users, okay? People who are using the houses, using the property, investing to buy and hold, not not speculators, right? Not, not people who are speculating on the market to increase, right? These are end user buyers. So I'm thinking, okay, with the regulations on lending right now, how, how tough the lenders are compared to 2003 and four when they're literally giving money away for nothing, um, the reg the regulations on lending, you know, the end users, like when you see a lot of speculation in the market, that's when you should start getting a little bit worried about a bubble and maybe a possible like crash, like a real crash. So I'm sitting here looking at, you know, you know, a year later, right? And I'm seeing these two bedrooms that are now in the 550 range. 
right and now i'm thinking i was talking to the owner today that we're under contract and now we know one went under contract at a higher price or at least it was priced at a lot higher price and we're thinking he's he's like listen i'm happy i'm happy with getting my 515 and i mean if, if, if it keeps going i'm still happy because this is going to end somewhere this this cannot continue to go like this i said yeah if it continues to go like this it's going to be these two bedrooms are going to be in the 650 range here by the end of the year we're going to be in the you know 700s on this two bedroom on the beach that's like you know um, now that's ridiculous for us down here we know this is building and we know what the end result's going to be now what's going to happen when that when that moment occurs what's that going to do to the market in terms of inventory all right i'll tell you that before i tell you what we need to do now to prepare for this what it's gonna do is we're gonna get flooded with inventory that's gonna be very temporary because when the market flattens out, that means we lose probably half our buyers. That's what made the market flatten out. But we're still gonna have half our buyers sitting there and they're gonna be in our pocket and they lost out on 10 houses so far and now all of a sudden their agent has four listings that's exactly what they want. So what's gonna happen? We're gonna double in a bunch of properties. It's gonna be euphoric. We're gonna have the buyers and the sellers and it's gonna last about 30 to 60 days before that inventory gets eat up so we're gonna be right back where we were right in terms of inventory I don't think it's gonna raise the inventory all that much and then from there I think we're gonna be in a pretty pretty balanced market we may see prices decrease a little but then kind of settle out we're gonna be in a very could you guys imagine how incredible the market would be if we had a little less demand prices were a little lower and we had more inventory that's what I'm talking about that's going to happen once this bubble bursts, we get that initial shock in the inventory system, and then everything levels out. We're going to be in the, the most incredible market at that time. All right, right now, between now and the 3 to 6 to 12 to 18 to 24 to 36 months before this happens, this could happen tomorrow. Between now and whenever it does happen, you guys need to be on the phone, using social media, whatever your means of reaching out to people are and getting into one-on-one -on -one real conversations over the phone or in person. You need to be having hundreds of conversations with property owners just to make friends. Just to make friends. Right? Just to make friends and see if there's anything you can do to help them. I'm talking about like 2023, you guys could literally take advantage of this moment right now and, and, and do exactly what I'm saying and quit caring about getting listings today and just focus on building relationships with property owners, getting tons of listings in the process, but more so focused on 2023 to become the number one agent in your market because you took advantage of this market cycle that we're in. If you're not just creating emails uh, like generic information, actually creating them, creating original content, giving your opinions on market, giving your opinions on new restaurants and um, so on and so forth. It's, it's like if people can really get to know you through your emails, like I was telling Devon earlier about being a hard worker, you know, like this email. Okay, when it comes to your inbox every single Wednesday, people realize how much of a hard worker you are because they open it and they realize you actually built it. And it's actually you and it's actually your opinions on stuff. And it comes consistent, it's dependable. Like they realize that you are this, this consistent person that does what you say you're gonna do, right? It does all the heavy lifting for you guys, right? And it, and it, it puts you in a position where people realize uh, who you are and you can scale it. This is, this, is, this is how you can actually scale your business, right? Scalable means, right, do more in the same amount of time, basically. To me, it means do more in the same amount of time. So if I spend 30 minutes a week on my email and I have five people, 50, 500, 5,000, 50,000, it still only takes 30 minutes to get my, to yeah. get, to get my content out to my clients. Uh, in a way that, um, you know, even though they realize it's a bulk email, it still has a little bit of me in there. That's the trick to all this. People are doing these drip campaigns and automation and stuff. I don't do any automation at all. No, listen guys, there's no cookie cutter system. There's no coach that's gonna get up here and tell you, oh, this is how you do it. This is what everyone should do, all right? Everybody has different strengths and weaknesses. Everybody has a different story. Everybody has different motivations. Everybody has different ambitions. Everybody has a different life. You know, some people have, you know, seven kids. Some people, you know, are, there's, there's so many different things, right? So 
I would say, generally speaking, um, number one, like hit me on Instagram, okay? Like hit me on Instagram and uh, message me and kind of let me help you through like whatever, like always hit me there with questions and stuff and let me help you through whatever it is. But you know, the next step is this, um, go to zero to diamond.com. You said three months. I mean, I have a 90 day action plan. Um, you know, go there, grab that, uh, do the 90 day action plan and take what you can out of it. The whole point of the 90 day action plan is to take you through every single type of scenario in terms of lead generation, um, you know, uh, like social media, uh, open house, like it takes you through all the different things. Whereas, you know, when you get through with the 28 days, which is inside the 90 days, then you literally can pick and choose, okay, what's the top three things I like? What are the top three strategies here out of everything that I did during 28 days? Now, the biggest thing is routine. Okay, every single, I just got off the phone with an agent who said he's just bored every day doing the same thing over and over again. And I said, bro, like, you, like successful people can stomach the boringness of this, the monotonous of this, right? Not everybody can stomach doing the same things over and over again for a decade or two to get to the top. And that's why a lot of people don't make it to the top. So one of the biggest things I want to tell you is, is don't overcomplicate it. Keep it very simple, right? And just realize that uh, once, you, once you've set the foundation for perspective in terms of realizing, closings happen every day, right? They're going to happen every day for the rest of your life, okay? No matter what the market does. Once you realize that and you realize business is unlimited for everyone, Right, and then, and then you realize, okay, competition doesn't exist then. If that's the case, you know, once you realize these things and you start to get a better confidence in the industry that you're in and the career that you've chosen, okay, now we're gonna set a real routine around understanding that, okay, I'm gonna be the best. Okay, that's where it starts.